All right, so this is KS5L board, and what I'm gonna try is to put it in, in KS3M or KS3L unit, previously it was KS3L, and we'll see if this will even read the hash boards or not. Kinda interesting to test this out, and let's see how it's gonna work. All right, and this is my KS3M. Actually, it was KS3L previously, and I put KS3M board on it, and it, it's six giga cache, I mean six tera cache uh, right now. So I need to shut it down and try. I'm gonna try to put this KS3 uh, KS5L board inside. Um, it looks very identical, but it's obviously not because it uses different uh, probably firmware. But I want to see if it's gonna even read it. Uh, so let's check it out. We're gonna use all these three slots for one, two, three hash boards. So one, two, three on this board. I have the fruition design kit with AC Infinity fan here. So all I need to do is just swap. It's ready with the test. It's already with spoofers. So I'm gonna turn the power on, disconnect, power off right now. And I'm gonna turn the power off on my AC Infinity fan. So now I can disconnect my uh, Ethernet cable here. Uh, the power, the control wire, the power supply to the board, and all these three hash boards, one, two, three. So I'm gonna do that first. And I'm gonna slide this uh, board out and hopefully nothing gonna smoke. So, uh, kind of experimental. I don't recommend anyone doing that. It's, it is very possible that we're gonna smoke right now our board and uh, obviously it's out of warranty, but it's not profitable anymore really much. So I just wanna kind of play with that unit a little bit so uh, let's connect to the power first okay we got the power I got the board controller right there okay and we need to connect this touch boards all right so let's go it's hard to do it with the one arm All three connected. I need to put back my Ethernet cable. I'm not gonna put the plate back in because it's probably not gonna work and I need to put my other uh, board back. So let's do this. Let's uh, start the unit. Hopefully we're not gonna see smoke coming out of the hash boards, but I really wanna see what's, if it, if it will come out on the web GUI, how it's gonna recognize at all this uh, hash board or yeah those three hash boards how it's gonna read it so uh, it's just experimental really guys it's uh, I don't recommend doing that at all and we'll see in a minute if this even gonna uh, register and our power supply gonna go green first it usually takes a minute before you know it just kind of reads everything and controller boards will send the signal to the power supply that it's all good the fan spoofers working if anything wrong with the fan or PSU we will not gonna go solid green there first so let's hope for that to happen doesn't look like it's going so I need to close the video here oh I was just about to do it so it did turn green so it looks like it read the board but I don't know what kind of and it's actually start so I need to go to web GUI real quick before it starts smoking all right so we're back at the computer this is IP 173 let's refresh and uh, now it's reads the temperatures of the board properly if you remember without the board it was uh, it still shows error for the board for the minor here so i wonder what it really reads so let's take a look at the 
Ice River monitor tool. What if we switch to KS3M and click read? Yeah, nothing. So really it's not KS3M for sure because the board is KS5L. Let's do that. Yeah, it does not recognize the board. So hopefully they're not smoking yet. Um, so really cannot read any of the boards. It does read temperature though of the board. So really interesting to see that. Uh, fan speeds are normal, everything normal, but the boards are probably not something that can be read by this uh, control board. So let's try different ones. Uh, let's try again KS3M. Yeah, nothing really happens there. And then KS5L right here. Yeah, nothing here. So basically, uh, the board's like showing uh, on the web GUI, but it did not recognize any of the hash boards. So yeah, definitely completely different chips, com completely different firmware possibly. Uh, and uh, it's not gonna work like KS5L and KS5M you can swap. Uh, unfortunately, nothing can be done there with this board. So that's what I saw, but it's, I wanted to test it out. So yeah, we can't see any of the hash boards, even though they connected, they cannot be recognized. Uh, on the monitor tool, obviously. Wonder if any of that uh, can read at all, any of that stuff. All right, so yeah, obviously I tried every single one. Uh, minor on monitor tool, switching to even KS1, KS Ultras. None of this will read uh, any of the boards. So obviously the boards not readable, so they're are not going to be recognized on your uh, monitor tool or web GUI so unfortunately you will not mine anything with this uh, using the different hash board uh, KS5L hash board with, uh, with the KS3M or KS3L unit so definitely completely different stuff in there okay so that's that's what i was gonna show you guys because i was just too excited because the ks5 l was taken ks5m firmware and ultra firmware so it was kind of weird but uh, it did took all those firmware updated and and showing on the web gui so it's not breaking on any of those firmware anyways um that's it for this video thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one so I did go back and put back the uh, original KS5M, KS3M board in that miner and just to make sure it didn't damage anything and it does mine. So if you accidentally put the wrong board, hopefully Ice River had that protection so it will not recognize the board and will not make them overclock crazy or to the wrong overclocks or, or something like that. So anyways, it's back and running seven minutes so to six terahash so looks like everything is fine uh it does need re uh, paste repasting because in garage it's kind of hot and two of the chips on board three are getting a lot hotter so I, i'm getting just third board is perfectly fine 88 the highest the second slightly higher 91 but when the temperature cools down it actually goes below 90 but the third board uh, definitely have issue only when the temperatures are cooler, like uh, below 70, uh, it will cool down to below 90. Otherwise it stays kind of hot. So this two chips, three and 56 to me looks like are, it's possibly just right all the way up in the front or uh, all the way in the back. So they kind of getting super hot there or my uh, thermal paste got dried out or worn out or maybe I believe I replaced on this specific miner so maybe I didn't put it uh, enough but it was fine you know like for the three four months I don't know what happened there because this unit was in the shipping for almost two months so probably was shaking and on the driving it may just got stressed out anyways that's that was just a little update for this video so if you get like oh shoot did you damage your miner so yeah, it didn't get damaged. Uh, luckily, it's back in mining. Obviously, the thermal paste was 
uh, on this board was an issue before so i have to do that then but other than that it's back online and no issue with the mining online whatsoever 60 r hash will probably update to the average and we'll go normally it's not really profitable right now we'll have to figure it out if i want to put ks5 l board and reduce my power consumption slightly and just see if it's a little more efficient uh for that because i believe it was 2700 watts when we did five uh tera hash right so anyways i have boards for ks5 uh, ks3 l which i can just throw it in and um and do that probably. Um, anyways, guys, I already said that's uh, goodbye on this video, but just wanna make sure everybody understand that do not switch wrong boards, but uh, KS5M and KS5L possibly same boards, but they still labeling when you order in differently. I don't know how uh, they figure in this out because boards looks really identical. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you now on the next one.